Welcome to the Joyful Miles Podcast, a podcast that's all about inspiring others to enjoy life one mile at a time. This is Laura. I am hosting today's episode. Rob is on vacation, running around in DC, having some fun, but I do have my dear friend Jackie here. Hello, Jackie. Hello, Laura. Hello, everybody. We do have a topic to talk about, don't we? Yes. We do. <laughs> and that is and the- summer running motivation. And I, I know that we've talked about this before in a previous podcast, but I personally think it's something that I need to hear and to talk about often because, you know, you get to the summer, it's hot, you have family around, and sometimes the motivation can slip. So mm-hmm. we're going to have a little, a little chat about that today. Sounds exciting. And we also have some comments that were left um, from some Joyful Milers over on the Joyful Miles Running Club Facebook group that we will be inserting um, here and there. Uh, But Jackie, I think like really when we're talking about motivation, a really good place to start is to analyze why you're feeling a lack of motivation. Um, And then you can work out from there. Like uh, right now, is is your life really crazy? Are you moving or, you know, taking care of a sick parent? Um, Do you have a major work project going on at your job? When your life is in chaos, maybe it's not the best time to add into the mix training for a marathon or a big race. Maybe right now you need to take care of your soul and just do some light fun runs to be able to balance all the stress in your life. And then once life, you know, calms down a little bit, then you can go and and find the motivation then to do these heavy training. And Jackie, I know this is something you and I've talked about too before, um, but maybe your lack of motivation isn't from you being lazy. Maybe your body is tired. Maybe you're taking on too much. Maybe you're pushing too hard. And that urge to spend Sunday morning relaxing and reading rather than doing this big long mile could be your body's way of saying, hey, you need to take a break. We need to rest for a little bit. You know, have you ever felt like that, Jackie? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like you kind of know, you kind of know deep down inside when you're procrastinating. Like if you want to binge watch Netflix, for 10 hours. <laughs> yeah. I know. Right. Or like, you're just like, well, we could go out to eat or go run. And like, you know, it's more, that's not my body's way of telling me I rest. That's just me wanting to go out to eat. So you've kind of got to balance it or say, all right, let's do this first. Then we'll go out to eat. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And the last thing I were talking about analyzing um, on my list is, is your passion still there? Maybe you're feeling a lack of motivation because you're burned out from running. Maybe you did a major race like the Dopey Challenge and you just need a break from running for a while. And maybe that's a good time to pick up a new type of activity for a while, whether it's, you know, Jackie, uh, you do CrossFit. I was doing the 80 day obsession or hiking or kayaking or just something to renew your spirit because running is always going to be there. You can always come back. So maybe it's time to take a break and try something new for a while. So good point. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, that's my uh, little beginner tip here. So let's get into the, to the people for the, the people who need some motivation, who do love running. The passion's still there, but they need a little kick out the door. Jackie, what is one thing that you would suggest first? Um, for me, one thing that really helps keep me motivated is staying connected on social media. Now I get you know, the trend right now is pull away, pull away. It can be negative and it can be, but for me, it helps me, um, by seeing other people's runs, seeing other people's achievements, getting the pat on the back once in a while when you do do a good race. Um, that to me sometimes keeps me going and you know, it's keeps me connected to other runners. I don't know if I did not have that. I don't know if I'd be able to keep up with my running um, schedule that I do. A lot of times I'll see a friend go out there and run and I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to go out there too. It's not that I'm competitive. It's that's why we post, you know, some people yeah. say, Oh, you post on Facebook. Just, you know, I've heard negative comments. You're bragging. Not really. If, if, especially for us runners, we kind of do it for each other to help inspire or motivate each other. So that's definitely a huge motivator for me. Yeah, that's, that's a great one, especially for um, if you uh, are in a situation in life where you don't have positive people surrounding you. Like if you have a friend who's like, ah, blow off your run, let's get a happy hour. Well, that probably would be me. And it, <laughs> you know, if you have people in your life who aren't supporting your running or aren't supporting your training, 
you know, like attracts like. So you can always go to Facebook, do a search for a running group. They're so easy to find. Join one and then just raise your hand and say, hello, you know, I'm new here. I would really love an accountability partner. And I, I guarantee you the odds are in your favor that you are going to find some people who connect with you, who are suffering or going through the same, you know, struggles or setbacks that you are and you can pick each other up. So yeah, very, very good tip, Jackie. So um, I am going to suggest for mine here is something new, like a new running app or a really cute new running outfit. I, I know it sounds superficial, but there's something about getting a really cute outfit that makes you feel good, that looks pretty, that makes you want to wear it and gives you that little push out the door. I know Jackie, um, when we're talking about apps, you discovered a uh, different app recently that you've been enjoying too. Yeah, I, uh, a friend of mine at work had suggested, um, they just started running, they used the Nike Plus running app. And I always have used Map My Run. I still use it, even when I do use the Nike one. But they have different, um, different types of workouts where you can be coached along the way. Now, I've always been someone who just goes out and runs, just whatever I feel like. But they, I tried the speed training workout. And you actually have a coach that like, tells you when to run, at what pace. And, um, and it's not long, but it's a different type of run. And they break it up in a way I really like. Similar to my Orange Theory classes, and um, I mean, I gotten a little faster. I've only done it a few times, but I actually really like it. So, you know, on those days, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go do it. I put my app on, and I think it definitely motivates me to get out there. Absolutely, I need to try that. We should do a show too of our favorite uh, apps and all that because <laughs> I know I have a lot. So I'm going to take a second and share a tip that was offered by Jen Swordson over on the Joyful Miles Running Club Facebook group. And she says, that I motivate by a goal, usually a race or two in the fall. When I have something to work toward and can implement a work back plan, it helps to motivate me. So that's a really good tip. And I noticed, Jackie, that's something that you're doing a lot lately. You're signing up for a lot of races and doing a lot of local 5Ks. I have. It's driving me crazy. This is the first time I think since I've really gotten into running back in what 2013, my first half, that I do not have a race like officially planned and signed up for. So usually those Disney ones, we sign up so far in advance and I haven't signed up for anything. So I feel like, oh my goodness, it's just a weird feeling for me. So in the meantime, I'm just you know checking the local race calendar and trying to figure out, okay, which one might be fun or which one. Um, is close or would work with my work schedule. So that definitely helps. That's definitely a good tip, Jen. Thank you. Yes. And added on to that, I know for me, I'm rather frugal. And if I spend the money for a race, I will train for that race because I don't want to waste that money. So, and, and that's okay. I mean, that's also another tip on my list is to think about what motivates you. Um, are you the type of person who is very motivated by a reward? Um, you know, like a, a really great cheat meal or, or a treat after your long run. Or if you finish your training plan, you can buy yourself a new outfit or a momentum wrap or something pretty. I mean, that doesn't work for me because I tend to buy something if I want it anyway. But maybe it works for you. Um, or are you motivated by bling? Which, nothing wrong with that, by the way, you know? I will admit, with sorry to cut you out, that no, race no. I did last night, I, I love. I was like, it said on their page that they had age groups of like five years, like 40 to 45 um, or 40 to 44, where some of them are like 40 to 50. So I'm like, hmm, I'm like, it's a smaller age bracket. So I wonder if I could possibly place. Because in my head, I'm like, maybe I could get a medal then. Because a lot of 5Ks, you don't get medals. Right. So then I even took it a step further to look at um, last year's finishing times. <laughs> To think if I even had a chance, and I knew I had a chance to possibly um, place in my age group. So that was that was a huge motivation for me to get out there last night. Because there you go. I wanted the medal, which I forgot to show. I did get a medal too. Oh, that's cute. Now you can hang the medal on the trophy. I know. There <laughs> exactly. you go. But um, again, look at five Ks, and if you're motivated by bling, check out. See if some of them offer medals yeah. or something you like. I know for me, one of my motivating factors is a failure, fear of failure, um, you know, and, and again, that's okay. That's what works for me. Also, if I 
I try to hold myself accountable by, you know, saying my, uh, my goals online and a video blog post, whatever. And it's like, once you say, this is what I want to do and you put it out there, it really holds me accountable because I do not want to have to come back and say, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't finish that. I, I didn't train for it. Um, so I'm highly motivated. So figure out what motivates you and, and dangle that carrot in front of your face, whatever that carrot may be. So there you go. I kind of got off at a little <laughs> sidetracked here. That happens a lot with us, right? That's right. <laughs> now I'm going to um, share what uh, Meredith Rice uh, suggested. Uh, she says that um, she ag agrees with Jen. I'd also add that if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Even if it's hot, I try to use it. Plus, you can feel better about that post-run ice cream. That's so, true. There you go. Kind of tying <laughs> in with the other one. So, Jackie, before I get to rambling again, <laughs> take advantage of my pause. What, what, mm -hmm. what other suggestions do you have? Um, one thing I did last year, and I think the summer before, that really helped because I, I admit I'm a baby when it gets too hot. I haven't gotten there yet this year. We've had a nice summer. But um, is doing a run streak. Now, sometimes those can backfire if you're prone to injury, so you got to be careful. But I last summer I did a 30-day run streak. I think I did it from like mid-June to mid-July. And I forced myself. I, I said I would do two miles a day. Now. I was okay with walking. It didn't have to be a run streak, but I wanted to make sure I logged in at least two miles a day. And that helped me so much. And it, it kept my endurance up and it forced me. I mean, I remember some summer nights I'd come home and I'd be like, I just go walk. I'm not going to injure myself going for a walk, you know, and you know, my kids are home or staying up late. So sometimes they'd even join me, but the, the run streak is really a good, good motivation for some people it works for me, but 30 days is my max. Watch your mic, sweetie. Oh, sorry. Sorry. There my you go. My hair's down, so there we go. Well, piggyback on what you just said, too, um, something else that also has been really motivating you is a step challenge recently. Yes, yes. I have to say. So we have a Facebook group, if, if you're new to our podcast, called the Joyful Miles Running Club. Um, it's open to anyone. If you want to join, just look us up. And we started doing a step challenge. I think we started in March or April was our first yes. month. Um, you do have to have a Garmin device, um, unfortunately, to do it, but that's the only way I can figure it out. And it has been really motivating for me. And I've done step challenges before, but I don't know what it is about this, or maybe it's because I have my new Garmin. Um, this one, I just really am finding myself checking at the end of the day, how did I do? I've learned what my average steps are on a good day. And I'm telling you, there have been days where I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to get out there. I have to go do something whether it be a, a quick run or a walk to Target instead of driving there or walking to go get pizza instead of driving there. My family's learned me say, I've got to get my steps in. And, and so the, come on, we're going for a walk. And they all just kind of join me. So that has been really successful for me personally. So thanks to everyone who does it with me. Yeah. Except Jackie's a little jealous uh, because uh, my numbers are fantastically low. So that's, <laughs> I'm winning, well, right? you're doing other things too. That's the thing you got to hold accountable. Like, or you got to take into consideration. Like some people bike, some people swim, kayak, um, and you're not going to get those steps in there. So even myself, like, I got to remember if I go for a bike ride, I'm getting exercise. Yeah. Yes. Yesterday when hiking, it was like this huge mountain. Yes, I didn't have as many steps, but it was a lot harder than walking around the neighborhood. So there can't you can't let go. yourself get a little crazy, but it's definitely getting me out the door. That's awesome. So, and you don't have to do a, a big group. You know, if that makes yeah. you feel uncomfortable, you can do it with a friend, one on one. So, people that are on Garmin too, they like have this one thing where you can join a step challenge and they will put you with uh, people that are kind of like at your same level. So it's not this big intimidation thing where you just feel yeah. like you're so behind and you're never going to win because the person who's in the lead, their, their, their steps are just so astronomical high that, you know, you might as well just give up. So that's true. And one thing I noticed, I think back in May, um, you know, I knew I was never going to get to first place, never going to even get to the top five. But what I would do is maybe set a goal of like, okay, who's right above me or two people above me. I'm going to try to catch up to them. Just a right. little catch up game. And it wasn't about beating them. It was just motivation for me to, to get out there. There you go. Always good. 
All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toss in uh, an oddball one. Well, maybe not an oddball one, but it's something that I've been doing lately. There's a YouTube channel called Be Inspired, and they do these motivational videos where they pull um, quotes from people like, you know, oh my gosh, uh, Tony Robbins, just all these fantastic motivational people. And while uh, in the morning, while I'm lying in bed and, you know, sitting there feeling lazy, uh, like this morning, I'm at the beach, I want to relax on the front porch with a cup of coffee and, and not go out and run. But I put this video on and it, it's talking, it, it, it's just, they have so many that you can pick from and it's motivational, it's inspiring and it got my butt up and I listened to it while I got ready and it, it really pumps you up and just makes you want to go out that door and tear some stuff up. So I'm going to have to try that one. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could find a podcast that offers that same type of content. But yeah, I'll link it below. It's, it's amazing. If you can't be inspired by that, then you, mm, something wrong, y'all, something wrong. <laughs> All right, Jackie, what you got next, girly girl? Um, I don't have anything else. <laughs> you do. So, you know what? I will read one. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I'll read some more. I'm not a list maker. I'm like, um. <laughs> That's my job. I'm the OCD one of the group. <laughs> All right, Angie James says, I have two good friends who are also joyful milers that I talk message with daily. We motivate each other, laugh together, and cry together when we don't meet our goals. We don't get to run together much, but when we do, it's all the more match special. So that cuts into what you were saying before, Jackie, about getting social and finding like-minded people. I and definitely think a good running group, run club, um, it seems to me those tend to be the people you see that are very successful. And I'm not saying successful in the sense of they're the fastest, but you see them at, at races together. I mean, we, we've experienced it ourselves. And yes. I even see it locally with like our local fleet feet running store, or I think we have like a running club called checkers here in Buffalo. And I, I see them at races. They all have like matching shirts and they seem to know each other and I probably should look into it one day, but <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's a really good suggestion, Jackie, is always to go to your local running store and see if they have any type of organized runs or clubs. Mm -hmm. I know in my area, um, if you do the, the runs, you get free beer. And I'm, I get a little socially awkward, and I have yet to go, which those who know me well, very surprised by, I'm sure, because I do like a beer here and there. But yeah, yeah, it's a great way to meet people and just to get connected. So good tip. All right, I am going to throw in another eyeball one, but um, here's something else that I do is I will always have an audiobook or a podcast that I am only allowed to listen to while running or like um, a TV show that I'm only allowed to watch while I'm on the treadmill. So maybe tell yourself that you can only listen to the Joyful Miles podcast when you're running and we will do our best to make sure that it is worth your while. <laughs> Do you listen to audiobooks, Jackie? Um, not typically because I'm cheap and I don't want to buy them. So I tend to go more with, sorry, you probably hate hearing that as an author. No, no, girl. <laughs> there's like, there's like, I, try the EverDrive app. You can, you can uh, rent audiobooks from your library for free. I mean, uh, my system in Maryland, it's the, um, of course, I don't have it in front of me. But just go to your library and, and or go online okay. and look into it. Try the EverDrive app. And all you got to do is put in your library card and you can get them for like, usually it's like two weeks. You can get it. Okay. So you can I should look them. into that. I remember signing up a long time ago, but I don't think I was yeah. as technologically advanced, but I'll have to yes, have It's show. really easy. They also have the, um, a new app called Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. Okay. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a, a not just Maryland. Um, my apologies if it is, but you know, definitely look into that. And I know for myself, I like to listen to, um, self-help, motivational type books. Like right now, I'm, I'm listening to You Are a Badass by Jennifer uh, Sincero. I, I, my apologies if I'm mispronouncing that. So maybe that's what you're noticing too, not just my hair, Jackie, but I'm a sure <laughs> badassery lately. You're super badass. I could totally tell. So, <laughs> podcast so help go. too. Um, like if you have a favorite podcast, like I, that's the only time I listen to podcasts is when I'm running. Yes. Um, and, you know, you see they have a new one. Okay, I'll go out there and listen to it. It gives you something. Because, you know, I have to say, the more I'm running, sometimes I get so sick of music. And I can't believe yes. I say that. Of all people, like, I am, like, someone who loves music. But sometimes it's just sometimes, it's too much. 
Yeah. So you have to break it up. Especially when you listen to the same songs. I do have one playlist that is my, you know, open in case of emergency playlist. <laughs> And I need it during the Baltimore 10 miler. I got to say it was, it was my hardest race ever. And it's full of all these, <laughs> it's full of all these angry songs and gangsta rap. You know, uh, I'm talking like rage against the machine. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Here, like, get me to the finish understand. line. Well, I could just kill a man. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that gets underneath my skin and, and, you know, pumps me up. So anyway, um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and give another one from Joyful Miles. And this is from Katie O'Brien, who says, running barefoot on the beach and swimming right after. Who doesn't want that? I mean, come on. Oh, my gosh. I and that it. gets into just shaking up your environment. Uh, if you run the same path all the time, you know, drive to a new trail, uh, you know, go to someplace new. Just that little change of environment can it help lift. Right before I think the Buffalo half, maybe like two weeks before, I just got in the car one morning. It was it was a beautiful morning, and I drove to downtown Buffalo on our waterfront, and I just went for a run there, and I I ran like six miles, but it was weird because it was so easy. It just felt like so short. It felt shorter than it would if I had done my normal route, and it was it was like really pleasant and enjoyable. So yeah. I know it takes a little time to drive there and back, but it was definitely worth it. This can also be motivation while you're on vacation yes. to get out and run because it is such a gorgeous way to actually see the place that you're at is to actually get out there on your own two feet and run it. And you, you, you notice things that you would miss just by driving by. And There's Jackie, something you, too. Oh gosh. I try to do that all the time. When I was in Boston, I woke up at sunrise and got out there and I saw so much that we didn't end up seeing, you know, when we were sightseeing because I had to walk you know, it's a lot of walking for the kids. So I did that in New York city too. I woke up at about 6 30 AM and you wake up with the city and you get to see everything. And I ran around central park. That was the highlight. One of the highlights of my trip. Yeah. And Robert, did you see Robert today? He's in Washington. Yes. He had like every monument. I, it's funny. Cause you know, I'd be funny to see his stops cause you're running and then you stop, but he had all these great pictures that he posted. Yeah, that was, that was fantastic. I wish he would have done a video or he can put it together for a video. I need to talk to him. <laughs> so, okay, let me look on my list. I did that. I did that. Oh, I listed that one twice. <laughs> I really <laughs> wanted that to be said. So here I'm going to read one now from Sally Ann Brown. Summer can be a time for this teacher to be tempted to sleep in, but the hot and humid Alabama summer encourages me to get out of bed and get moving before the temperatures rise. So when we're talking summer running motivation, that's definitely a good one to get out there before you're baking. Yes. No, you really need to. And when we go to Hilton Head um, on vacation, the one year I was in the middle of my run streak. So I knew, you know, I, I wanted to keep going. I wanted to prove I can do it on vacation. And I would get up with the sunrise because otherwise it's too brutal. The heat was just too much. So I'm just noticing my light here, Jackie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I have like, it's really cloudy outside. I don't, I'm going to have to fix that really quick. Cause I'm like looking like Casper here. Oh my gosh. It's so much better. Why didn't I do that? Like you know, 20 I think ago. I am. I should probably close mine. But that's okay. So, okay. So let's move on. Um, now here's one that I, often like to do too is I like to think and imagine what my race day is going to be like, you know, uh, if it's, you know, four months from now, like my, my next major race is the Baltimore marathon. And I already have a visual of how I want that race to go. So sometimes I will sit quietly. I will meditate and visualize how I want my race experience to be. I want to feel powerful. I want to feel strong. I, you know, I'm not really looking to have a major PR because I have a lot going on this year but I want to finish feeling good. You know, you don't want to fin get to go to a race feeling guilty and awful about yourself because you didn't train, you're unprepared, you're not ready. This is not what you expected. This is not what you wanted. You paid a lot of money for this race. You don't want those feelings. And so if you don't want those feelings, then guess what? Now is the time to go out the door and to get your runs in, which leads me into a little bit of a, a tough love one. But if you are someone who did sign up for a race, you know, no one made you register. You know, race director did not call you up and say, please, please, will you do this race? You signed up for it. You put your money on the line. So you need to honor that decision to 
be the best you can when you go to that race by getting out the door and training. I had to throw a tough love in there somewhere. <laughs> that's not too tough. Don't worry. I got one. I got a good card. I got a really rough one, but I'm going to save that for the end because that one's right. uh, a pretty hard one. So instead, um, I'm going to share something that Jenna Lynn uh, gave us. And she said, my motivation for training is a new proof of time. It's a fantastic reward, a better corral placement for all of my Disney runs. That's a good one for us, true. Jackie. That is so true because I will never run a Disney run for time ever. However, I want to, I want to get up there earlier in the corrals. That's important to me because that gives me more time to have fun. Yes. So to get a good proof of time, that's motivation. It's so true in itself. Yes. Very good, Jenelyn. Thank you so much. Jenelyn gets us. <laughs> she does get us. <laughs> All right, let me see. I covered everything on this list. So I'm going to share, uh, the last one is from Donna Phillips Quackenbush. She says, if I can run on the beach, I'm a happy girl. Love to find new places to run and a change of scenery that comes with some vacation. She is actually heading to Alaska this summer and hoping to run there a little wow. on the ship. So okay. that sounds pretty awesome. Sure does. There you go. Okay, so, so for everyone who contributed on the Joyful Miles Running Club, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. So here we go, Jackie. I'm pulling the, the last tip here and playing the nasty card, and that is to think about how much it would suck to be injured and not be able to run. Oh, you know what? That is a good one. And yeah. Is, or not even just injured, but like people who can't, you know, people who, who maybe used to run and they can't now. I mean, I, you you know, their body doesn't let them. Like, we're so lucky to be able to do this. We really it's are. It's a blessing. It is. I mean, you've experienced injury, and yeah. it's, it's hard, you know. And yeah. some people just can't do it. I mean, I've met so many people like, oh, I used to love to run. I can't anymore. So yeah. I miss it. I wish I was out there, you mm -hmm. know. Just, just think about them when you're lying in bed and you, you don't want to put your running shoes on. There are people who would gladly take your place. And I know when I was injured, there was, I had went through some really deep depression moments there, you know, imagining, you know, having to give up this life and this, this hobby that I love. And, you know, most of my friends are runners and just thinking about not being able to do races with them or run Disney races anymore. is it's terrifying. And, and back then I vowed that I would never complain. If you have been injured in the past, if you're injured now, just, you know, really hold on to that feeling of, you know, of want, of desperation, of need, and use that to drive you with gratitude and enjoy the blessing that you have. Mm -hmm. So there you go. I think got, anything else on your, got anything else underneath your sleeve, girl? No, I'm, you make me want to go run, except I, I already did that this morning. I know. We're all showered and, and pretty. We're going to film another <laughs> here, so... So anyway, um, I guess that is going to wrap it up, but thank you so much for listening. Um, if you're, if we had some audio problems, um, I'm sorry. I'm at the beach house, not where I usually film. And I'm definitely sorry about the bad lighting in the beginning. I don't know why I didn't fix it to begin with for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, but thank you so much. We truly appreciate the support. Uh, come on over to the Joyful Miles Running Club Facebook group. It's promo free. It's just a place where we chat and get to know each other ask questions, you know, share accomplishments and, and share bling pictures, which we love. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have the bling pictures. Yes. And I will put links to everything below to our Instagram, Twitter, all that other fun stuff. So Jackie, time to wrap this up for Rob, who is off on vacation, having fun for Jackie and myself. Thank you so much for listening. Take care, have a joyful day and get to running. Yes. Enjoy it. Your turn, Jackie. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching. Joyful. Bye, <laughs> <laughs>